Sherry Shante with Brown Sugar Talk on the Black Unicorn Styling. Okay, so today I just wanted to like, I know I did one show, but again, it was a nothing show. It was just like me complaining. So anyway, I was walking back from voting. I voted. Anyway, I was walking back from voting and I was thinking about... I talked about Boosie and, like, all this stuff that people talk about as far as, like, sexual situations with their children. And because I'm pretty much the same way. Like, I would not bring a woman here to discuss anything because I'm a woman. Like, I can discuss all those things with my son. But at the same time, if, um, and I had to be talked to as well by a doctor. Like, when my parents got ready to talk to me about sex, I actually passed out. Like, I didn't even want to kiss a boy. Like, my mama talked about that so many times. She thought that if she kissed a boy, she would get pregnant. And she was, like, um, she wasn't educated in sex either. So, I did educate myself in sex, especially because I was so afraid of it. So, with my son, I educate him now. Also, I want to understand his sexuality and, like, what he goes through as a as a as a guy, I mean, and it, it's been a realization. Like at six, he wanted a girlfriend, and a little girl told him, and a teacher told him that um they just, that she just wanted to be friends. And he said, okay, that's fine with me. He said, I like that mom. He said because um you know he just he didn't want to feel the pressure to have a girlfriend, and he just really did like the girl as a friend. Um, also I want to know. Like, does he, what his, because nobody ever talked to me about sex. Like, sex in our house was like a taboo thing, even though they knew abuse and stuff was going on. That's all they tell you is just stay away from people and all this different stuff. But it's like nobody ever just sits down to tell you about your body. Even with your period, like my vagina hurt because we used to have these, like, sling things. And you just used to have to put it inside of a, um, It this was before, you used to have to put the pad inside of a, um, inside these little ring things and my vagina hurt i used to masturbate a lot like it was just like so much shit that I, that nobody ever like sit down and talk to me about so in this house like he can talk about whatever like um i think the first thing was it was the sex like he was looking at um what's asian porn and he thought I was going to get upset with him. And I'm like, why are you trying to... He, like, he was actually trying to fight me. Like, I could smell his sweat. So, that's one thing. Like, when they start going through puberty, they start from 9 years old. I'm reading right now, but it's from 9 to, like, 15 years old. And uh, some kids start early, some kids start late. So, I'm pretty sure he already started. But what's happen- what happened is it's just, like, strong odor. So, I found the that we talked about it. He said that he'll wait, okay? So... He pretty much knows everything. He knows that his voice will get deeper. He knows that he will, um, he knows that he'll have wet dreams. He knows that he will get taller, bigger, whatever. You know, he knows that his gentle, he knows all that stuff. Like, he was the one to explain that to me. Like, I did not have to explain that to him. But then I'm looking on this and I'm like, people really do understand about, people really do understand boys in their, in their puberty, But they don't talk about the girl's puberty. Like, I'm looking at this, and I was about to go through it, and I'm like, I don't want to do this because in my son's, it's like a huge explanation of, like, everything that he's going through. And here they talk about from, like, 8 to 11, how our hips change, or how, like, actually from 8 to 11, we get a new hormone. Stage 2, they'll have visible signs of puberty, like little breasts, and um, they'll start rounding out. Also, they'll get hair. They'll get, like, pubic hair. Same thing with boys. Stage three, um, they just talk about the growth of the breasts and how their height change. Stage four, um, again, it's still about the breasts. The hair and skin can come become oily. And then stage five, the person is, like, a full adult and into full adult height. And it's, like, <laughs> we really do go through a lot more. It's not anything about a period or anything. So, Periods can start as early, I think, aren't they, at, at like eight or nine years old. Um, some people actually do have late periods. And sometimes I think it's because they play sports. So some girls don't actually have a period right away. Um, 
something else about that. Like, they don't talk about, the, like, how the hymen, could, the hymen could break or something like that. I don't know if that's a part of the puberty stage, but that's something that the doctor talked to me about as well. Um, as far as the masturbation goes, girls get horny too. Like, for real. Like, they actually get horny. They might hump on pillows, you know, different things like that. They might play with themselves, all those different things. That's not strange. It is normal. Um, some kids will touch themselves at, I think, age five, six. It's a discovery situation. So, they discover themselves. And I told my son, like, for real, just look at yourself in the bathroom or, and, you know, be in a private place. Don't do those things in public. Um, we talk about his balls being adjusted. Boys, girls, if you see your bo the boys trying to move around a little bit, it's because their balls need to be adjusted. You know, it's like his penis is like stuck to his leg or something. Like something that moved them around and it ain't right. So they got to fix that because they got extra junk down there. The same thing with having a girl. Sometimes you have on a G-string and that motherfucker be straight up in your coochie. Like it's like, it's just like a line that's right there. Again, all these things are just normal and... These are the conversations. He also found the deal, though. So he said, Mom, this is a, you know, like, I found, I see, he said, what is this in his bathroom? I said, uh, what is it? What is, he said, what is this purple thing? He said, I think it's a deal, though. I said, okay. Yeah, that's what it is, you know. And that's just how it is. Like, we just, we are just open and we discuss those things because it needs to be discussed. If you don't want your, and this is why I say rules need, the same rules need to apply for a man and for a woman, for a girl and a boy. This is why I had the one person that I used to hang out with and his son was gay. And he was like, no, you're not, you know, you're not going to have sex while you in this house. The same rules need to apply for boys as they do for girls, whether they be gay or straight. So if you're not going to bring no nasty ass man to your house to talk to your daughter about sex, don't bring no nasty ass woman to your house to talk about sex. Y'all understand? So in that case, that's why people got offended. Because if you bring a nasty ass man to come and talk about something, and I'm just saying like the doctor wasn't, the doctor just had diagrams, different things like that. So what I'm saying, it's like they go hand in hand because sometimes people will go too far. And, they, and, if, and sometimes they don't actually heal from things that people put them through so if they haven't healed from what people put them through then this person could cause abuse to your child or you know you see what i'm saying or teaching your child now how to abuse and that's not cool so that's why it's important for you guys to have an open dialogue about sex and he can i mean for real he know what a all this shit on fucking jeffy he'll ask me the question it's like what's the um I don't know what these six terms are, but he asked. I mean, and, and I listen to rap music, too. He know all that stuff, too. So, for me, it's better for me to understand how he feels about sex and then, therefore, teach him how he also uses that to deal with a woman or to deal with his own sexuality. Um. So, that's all I'm saying. It's like, just make sure you let them know that those things are okay and that they are safe. Not all kids will masturbate. Some kids won't. So sometimes you might just be lucky and don't have to worry about it. You don't have to smell. They, the, oh my God, the the difference in the in the sweat is oh, it's so different. But what I'm saying is like you know that's I think that's sometimes a lucky situation. Like for letting them take their time and go through like all these different things, but also being there to guide them and instruct them on. What's better for them? And I don't know how to explain this. Well, I, one person made me mad because I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm a person that's going to teach him how to be a better lover. And he said, what do that mean? What is that supposed to mean? That's what that means. That means that I teach my child how to be good to himself as well as good to others. It has nothing to do with him touching himself. It has nothing to do with him touching other people. All it has to do with let me guide you through what's a safe thing for you to do and what's not a safe thing for you to do. The other day we just had to talk about the black widow and the praying mantis. And that was a good time for me to talk about what good love is and what bad love is. You see what I'm saying? And we saw it and I actually was teaching him to see it both ways. I was like, it's kind of sweet that they eat the that they eat the meals after they mate with them. You know, I said because they get to be a part of them or whatever. And they get to also be a part of their child because they got to eat 
the male, right? They they are nourishing the the body of the female, and he'll never have another lover again, you know. But then I told him the bad part about it is is some people are empty, whether it be a man or a woman. So if that's the case, if they're an empty person, they'll devour you just like the praying mantis and the black widow will. So you have to be careful on who the partners are that you choose. I said, because if you choose an empty person, you will end up hurt. But if you choose a person that has potential and fullness and all these different things, you can end up creating a beautiful friendship, a beautiful relationship, and all these different things. So I, I was teaching him that's how he gets to choose wisely. So y'all understand what I'm saying? So it's like, it's not all about sex. You have to start to teach them and show them how good it feels to be in relationships first with the person as opposed to let's go ahead and have sex let's go ahead and let me come on over here girl let me bust that nut not to say that that's not a stage that they probably want that they will go through and that's something that they shouldn't have to feel guilty about i think that if that's done with honesty and respect that's a good stage to be in so that's all i'm saying it's like that's the things that you want to incorporate I think as a parent, there's enough stuff out here about a man's puberty. I think that there does need to be more out here about a woman's puberty. Um, Maybe I should write it. I don't know. I think I'll write it one day. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah, be sure to talk to them about everything because we don't even... Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Who knows? Um, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, just talk to them about everything. Don't just leave them in the dark. Don't shame them. Don't, um, you know, I don't know. It's a lot of things that you don't have to do. I say in here, we try to make sex a comfortable part of the conversation. We try, I try to make, it's going to be hard when they're going through puberty to say breasts and ass because they already feel ashamed about it anyway it's like oh my god you know i masturbated this woman no i best you know what i'm saying i am attracted to breasts you know oh i'm attracted to ass and you saying that to your kid booty you know it's like they don't like they can't take none of that especially during that that time after that they'll be okay but that first uh, from nine to like 15 it's like it's embarrassment so i still say it i still put him in an uncomfortable position because i want him to know that that's okay too. That body positivity is okay. Like it is okay. However you are, it's okay. Whatever you like, it's okay. You not, you know what I'm saying? It's not it's nothing wrong with you. I don't want to slap him on his hand for being uh for being curious or asking questions or anything like that. It's all of that is okay. And I'm happy about how and that's why I'm sharing it with people too. I'm happy about how he is as far as it comes to just everything. And y'all will be surprised. He just asked me out the blue. Is this a deal though? <laughs> <laughs> Mama, what's a sex doll? You know, he just come out the blue and say that like, okay, I'm so happy that you like so confident about it, you know? Um, and that's what I that's where I want him to be. I want him to understand other people and i think that's a good way for him to just come to a point where he understands a woman and that it's not all about wham bam thank you ma'am and i think he's also there too it may change you know it may change a lot but at least he okay with talking about it so i don't know i think y'all have to get out of your comfort zone and like i said we all have sex too and you have to think about what it was like for you um, and the miseducation of you and all these different things. It's just a new time and a new way for you to educate your child and talk about all these different things. If you cannot talk about it, I hope y'all have a doctor like I had because we talked about it. And I don't know. I think it was better for me. Because y'all see, I'm just like more of a a scientific kid. So it was kind of better for me to have a doctor tell me instead of like having some strange person tell me you know he let me know the facts he let me know the truth so i don't know i say that's that's it too if you can't do it that way then do it in a roundabout way my son also likes um 
games like that too. Like he he playing a game now where the baby is being produced or something like that. Like he watched the baby grow. He used to play with dolls and change pampers. And that's something that y'all should think about too. When your son is playing with dolls, that does not mean your son is gay. Like it does it has no correlation to being gay. But that tells me that he would be a great father. You see, he used to just and he wasn't even around babies like that. Like he was just with me. And so he would just come in and when we go somewhere and he go play, he'll actually be the only boy in there changing pampers and putting the baby in a blanket and holding the baby while they go to sleep. I thought that was the sweetest shit ever. So, even that is something where you know that your child is a nurturer. Okay? Um, what else? That's just it. And the end all be all is just he, the child or the girl, the boy or the girl is human. The child is human. And it's a situation of reproduction. And it's actually healthy to masturbate. Um, it's a stress reliever. It's also a self-soother. So some people may have been through abuse and that's the only way they know how to self-soothe. For me, it's a big self, self-soother, self you know. Um, I don't know, but that's the way some people self-soothe. Some children would still self-soothe that way too. Um, what else? Whew. It's also something where, you know, people don't think that it's right because it's in a religion. I know they did an episode of this on Grey's Anatomy where the guy thought that it was something against his, uh, that he was masturbating and he didn't want a penis anymore because um, it was something against his religion or it was in the Bible. I mean, seriously, go through your humanness and you will realize that sometimes it's just that way. You may also find out that maybe your child could be asexual. You will also find out what your child's sexuality is during this time. They may already know. At age 8 or 9, they probably already know. They already know what they're attracted to. They already know what they want. So, um, again, it's just a good time for you to educate. And I'm saying be straight up. Don't cook, sugarcoat it. Ain't no stork brought no damn baby here. No, I had sex with your father, the sperm into my egg, and then you were produced. It's, I'm not, it don't, please don't sugarcoat and mess these kids up. They mess up a whole generation of people. And then a whole generation of ignorant ass men raise another generation of ignorant ass men. And you see what I'm saying? So it's like, do not perpetuate the stereotype. Actually teach them about themselves because it's nothing disgusting about having sex with another human. Nothing. Nothing about it. And even teaching your children about it. You don't have to introduce them to porn. You can show them diagrams. You can show them um, anything you want to. It's your child. But what I'm saying is just make sure that you are discussing all those topics. And make sure that they can come to you with those topics. Make sure, And if they can't come to you, make sure they have somebody else they can go to. Somebody else that they can be honest with. Like a good godparent. You know, um, so yeah. That's all I'm saying. It's like, I didn't want to, like, put that out there like, yeah, I thought he was right. And I do. I still, I'm still, like, I still got to stand by him on that one. Because if I wasn't as open with him, I would want to put somebody in his life that would discuss that with him. And I'm sorry. I mean, I just, I just, I'm like, I don't know what would happen. I'm not going to assume the worst. But what I'm saying is, like, I would want my child to... No, if my child was gay, I would put my I would put my child in a situation to be able to talk somebody talk to somebody that was gay. If my child was pansexual, I would, you know what I'm saying? I want to put them in a situation. I want to put my child in a perfect situation for their growth. And then I would also find mentors that were that way too. You know what I'm saying? It's like um, I was still I would still encompass everybody, but I would, but that's who he wants to be. So now I'm going to put that person in front of him because that's who he wants to be. That's how he wants to be. Those are the people I'm going to present to him because that's the path that he is taking or she will take or whatever. So um, most people, if you don't agree, you don't agree. But that, what I'm saying is that's it. Like y'all have to be open about it because if you're not open about it, you will end up with a lot more problems. I think in the end that you will when you first start it. You see what I'm saying? Then if you would just sit down and have a conversation with them. So anyway, that's it for today. That's Shantae. I will not get back on her again. I promise. I promise. Don't nobody look at it anyway. It's just for the future anyway, I guess. But uh, it's Shantae with Brown Sugar Talk on the Black Unicorns telling you 
to make sure you have talks about puberty. And in pu- puberty include masturbation, self-love, different types of sexuality, um, and make sure that you set it up for, to have very open conversations about those things in their bodies. Okay? Have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good day.